Hey, I like this. I could get used to something like this. I can't even do that with my, my, my two other cameras, you know? Imagine that. That's how that's how amazing technology has gotten. As old school as I am, I mean, to actually be not only filming using this phone, uh, but also and I'm able to actually see myself to film properly, to film myself frame properly, and not only that, but it's, it, you know, I, I, I'm very, I think it's very cool to actually maybe... I'll use this as a thumbnail, but to show myself with a painting that I still have behind me, as I mentioned before a few times, I created in 2005 when I was living in a basement apartment in NDG. And uh, so let's see, can I can I switch this thing around? Uh, no. All right, guys. So uh, things are going well with the Canadian Car and Foundry 1952 Brill. Um, and uh, as you can see that's why I'm doing this update it's going really well this whole thing it's a big drawing and uh, if you hear Gloria meowing it's because she wants the food again you want food again? Meow. she has this little sad you know she's not stupid eh? she has this little like a sad meow like oh poor me I need food eh? always want food who's a good pussy cat? you know a little ghost cat? With the big tail? Yeah, well, you're gonna have to wait, Daddy's making a video now. Anyway, so, uh, like I'm saying, so this thing's going well, man. Um, okay, first of all, uh, you know, I went to buy some markers at Omer de Serre, and then I realized that they have this pack of markers for like, I don't know, 14 bucks, which is good because usually they're like two bucks each, you know? And they're made for Meredith Serre, whatever, it doesn't matter, I don't care if they're made in China, it's the quality. How long do they last? That's the question. What's the intensity of the marker and how long are they going to last? You know, just like cars. And, um, anyway, so, uh, I thought that, I don't know, it just, where's that marker? The brown on the bus, you probably noticed it, you know, you're like, oh, well, and it's, you know, it's almost more of a brown like this. And... I thought to myself, shit, I started drawing, I said, this is dark, it's like chocolate brown. Actually, it is chocolate brown, and yeah, I look at it, and I'm like, look at the tip, I'm like, because I didn't try it, because it was in the pack. But, you know, I don't know, whatever, and I figure, well, you know, so be it, whatever, close enough. I mean, maybe in different, you know, things sometimes, as an artist, I should know, when you look at things in a different light, low light, regular light and bright light, they can look different. different. They can look like a different shade of that said color. You know? Oh, by the way, uh, this here was orange, and uh, but it's been painted red since, well, I don't know since when, but I took this picture in, uh, this picture I had enlarged recently for this, for this drawing. I took this picture in 2008. So, uh, and, you know, it, it will be available if somebody wants it. It's one of a kind. And, um, what else? All right, the fleet number, 2027. I made that mistake. I was supposed to write 2527. And uh, and I'm like, because look, there, you can barely see it actually here. You can barely see it. It's very legible. But anyway, it's the old style letters. I mean, like really old style font. And then they, they put them all on plates, separate plates, the numbers on all the buses. So I guess they, and that way it's just easier for them to retire a bus and to especially uh, change the fleet number on a bus. For whatever the reason, you know, and uh, so it is a 52 uh, uh, Brill, and um, just a second there. And anyway, so I figure, what the hell? It doesn't have to be that 5207. It doesn't have to be this one, which, if you didn't see part one, this is a restored unit. This is the only. This is like one of the only existing buses that that uh, that we have. And there's another one, oddly enough, I didn't mention it in the first video in part one that there's another one just like this. Because in the 60s, they were light yellow with a silver top. And then they went back to brown like this. And, and anyway, uh, but there's one in Ottawa they're restoring. So how cool is that? This particular bus, I don't want to go on a tangent. It's almost like fucking political. But this bus is not here. It's an hour and a half and away in Granby. Now, I have nothing against Granby. I have a friend there. I go to the Classic Car Show, which is the biggest in Canada every year. But this bus, I don't know why. This bus should be part of our heritage here in Montreal. It should be here, here in Montreal. Instead, it just sits like doing nothing, as far as I know, at a bus garage owned by Groupe Vero. So, uh, 
I don't know, I was drawing away on this thinking to myself, oh, I should almost like run a campaign just to, just to get like, you know, signatures to get people interested in bringing one of these back. Even though a couple of years, you know, like my stepfather already told me, or sorry, my father-in-law told me they were too hot in the summer because they were mid-engine, which I'd forgotten. And that was a man engine, if I'm not mistaken, with a British motor. British. Not only that, somebody also met, said uh, to me, what is it they said that besides getting hot? Um, well, anyway, they said they prefer the GM new looks and... Uh, um, I guess they, they were just a very old design. I mean, their fucking design dated back to the 40s. You know, 1947, actually. And they were made right here in Lachine. And, um, okay, so now, on to the station. La Salle, Metro La Salle. So, like I said, this pillar here, it's just an awesome structure. I mean, how could I not do a drawing of this? It's, it's, it's so underrated. Uh, you know, more so than other metro stations. Another one I'd like to do a drawing of is Prefontaine. You know, a new look bus or something, but this is really amazing. All these triangular shapes, you know, and and I love that. The whole entrance and the pillar, like I said, and then there's this huge ankle part. This just looks like this gigantic block of cement. It's kind of alien or UFO-like, you know, and it's going well too, but it's going to take me a shitload of time just to make all those little lines. All those little lines. It's got to be like that time when I drew, no joke, I drew like the World Trade Centers, or one of them anyway. It took forever. Forever, ever. Uh, one of the things that occurred to me as I started drawing is right here, is this building here. I got, me, I get very uh, anal when it comes to how things used to look, especially like, you know, Montreal and this and that. So, this building here, this, you know, low-cost building here, low-cost housing, uh, I wondered, I'm like, shit, was this made in the 80s? You know, I mean, this station opened in 82. And like I mentioned before in the other video, the reason why I'm drawing this here is not just because it's a contrast of designs, because the last remaining ones of these brown buses were in that southwest borough where the station is. I, uh, this this one, or whatever, the one that was like this one, I got the wrong fleet number on this one, that was retired in 82, 32, 30 years of service. So anyway, uh, and I'm like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to draw it anyway. I don't want to make a big goddamn deal out of it. It looks bloody old anyway. That building could have been built when I was born in 75 anyway. But I'm pretty sure, I'm willing to bet it was born. It was born. It was born, it was built, you know, whatever, 81, 82, 83. Just like when this uh, this station was built here in 82. So like I said, going very, very well. Once again, the blue was not, you see that? That's one of the markers I bought. This was to hopefully match with this one here which ran out when I colored this little window here in the driver's window and it, whatever, it's not a big deal. This I was talking about doing some kind of reflective, funky thing, almost with a sunset, and I'm like, ah, you know, I try, you want to keep something like this as simple as possible because there's a lot of details in here. I still have to, you can see I'm going to have to fix this with paint. Uh, I'm going to have to also fix this a little bit, the, the, the MTC or uh, CTC or Tarot, I'm going to have to fix that also with some white paint. Fleet numbers look good. Canadian car emblem looks good. That I'm going to do black and then also put, you know, use paint for the LaSalle uh, sign. Then you see again how anal I am. Look, I'll just to show you here, you see here on this little triangle, there's a little um, uh, Montreal Metro uh, uh, icon there. But was it always there? Or was it added on like, you know, 10, 15 years ago? I, I don't know. Okay, well, this was in 2008, so 11 years ago. But, you know what I mean? And uh, so, but, you know, again, this is great. It gives me, it's just nothing better a feeling to create something not only out of nothing, but something that's fucking amazing, that rocks, that, you know, not everybody can do. And I keep thinking about that, my, that about since I started working on that, because, you know, I like making these model cars, but they're frankly often more frustrating to make for whatever reason. Why is this thing out of focus? Focus, damn it. Especially these trucks, they just, they take a lot of time to make, and, um, you know, the painting alone, I don't do great paint jobs, frankly, I never have, and, um, but, you know, it also, that's also very um, rewarding, but again, this, you know, most people can actually do that kind of stuff, believe it or not, I think so anyway, and uh, so, you know, but doing something like this, and the fact that I'm visually impaired, uh, no, it's not, uh, it's not obvious. It has a few challenges, but generally it goes very well. And I think the camera won't stay focused because I'm not holding it steady. It's not like a regular camera camera, you know? Alright guys, that's a little update, so take it easy. Bye-bye.